In today's video, we're going to look at the United States of America and a blueprint of how to transform your energy supply. So here's the location. I think everybody knows where the United States is. And just to flag up that we will shortly be doing a video on the North Slope of Alaska and some interesting discoveries that have been made in the last few years. But for today, we're going to have a look at the US production profile from 1965 to 2020. And you can see that production peaked in the late 60s and again in the sort of the mid 80s. But from 1985, there's a decline right through to sort of 2005. And if we were to project that, we might uh, expect that this uh, this profile would follow something like this and we'd be down at about sort of six million barrels a day. Well, that's not what happened. What happened was this. And you can see that over the last decade, the US has added some 12 million barrels of oil equivalent, a massive increase in the production rate, more than doubling what uh, it would have been without this new impetus. And what was that impetus? Well. It was shale gas, fracking. It's now turned the United States from a net importer to a net exporter, certainly uh, exporting LNG, and it could soon be exporting crude oil or refined products thereof. Now, with shale, we often hear that, oh, it's, it's all coming to an end. And here's some uh, projections here from the US EIA. And you can see that uh, they're predicting that U.S. oil output um, it has recovered from the uh, from the, the virus, the pandemic, and is increasing and projected to increase here by quite a significant percentage over this period of time. If we look at the uh, the April 22, this was projected from earlier in the year or year end by the looks of things you can see the contribution here's the uh, in green the permian basin the eagleford the barkin and all the other basins that are listed only amount to this and of course these are all the unconventional uh, basins with all of the uh, fracking of of both uh, shales and very tight uh, limestones and sandstones to produce the amazing result that we've seen to date. Now, not all wells end up getting completed straight away. And this is an interesting graph which shows that from December 2013, right up to November 2021, that uh, there was basically a, a build up of the number of wells that were available for um, had been drilled and were available to be completed and actually put on production and uh, these were growing and growing and of course as things slowed down uh, during the pandemic um, you can see that some of that stock was actually quite a, a useful reserve to have to keep the numbers up. Now part of the reason for the view that, uh, that that shale oil and shale gas is coming to an end can be kind of summarized when we look at plots like this. Here on the left, we're looking at uh, the gas production from the Marcellus, but over here, just the US, the total oil production, they're different periods of time. But I think uh, the important thing is you see that older wells um, essentially do not decline at a very high rate. They're quite a steady, quite a low rate, but they keep on going for a long, long period of time. Whereas very, very recent wells, um, sort of here in this plot, uh, 2014 wells, by 2016, they have almost halved um, the, the, the rate. And, and when you stack these things up, you can see that the curve gets increasingly steep. Same for the Marcellus gas and same for just about every basin that you look at. So you have to keep drilling. You must keep drilling. And also you've got to um, make a profit. Businesses are there to make a profit. And so you've got to find opportunities that are going to make a return. Now, we've had a number of technological advances with uh, multiple fracks in horizontal wells, which have kept that going. But there will come a time when uh, this will level out. And in fact, here's a projection that suggests that uh, the US shale gas and tight oil plays, uh, and this is measured in uh, 
trillions of cubic feet of gas. You can see here we are today um, just around about uh, 23.16 trillion cubic feet of gas and uh, it is going to continue to rise but you can see that uh, because of this uh, running faster to stand still effect uh, it is going to kind of plateau out through time. But shale gas and shale oil production is only there to replace the declining conventional gas and the declining um, unconventional gas but what's produced is actually dictated by consumption and that's what leads to all the emissions. Here we're looking at US energy consumption measured in quadrillion British thermal units. This is data from the EIA and you can see it's broken out by energy source. Now biofuels hydro they're basically just ticking along uh, not really doing very much and projected not to increase significantly. You know many of the the rivers that can be dammed have been dammed for example but renewables you can see is uh, is projected to increase significantly through time. Coal was really going uh, on an increase here up until the uh, so around about 2008. But since then there has been a major decline, but is still going to be a significant contribution through the um, 30s, 40s and 50s. Oil and gas, of course, projected to still be one of the major energy sources. This dip here is uh, is the sort of the pandemic. But, uh, you know, they, they are in, indeed shown to even being increasing here uh, to 2050 and this is demand this is not production this is demand now that's all very well but there is only one atmosphere so it doesn't really matter what one individual country is doing um, we want to uh, we want to have a look globally and so here's the global picture and it's really not as good um, as the US picture in that you're seeing here that uh, petroleum and other liquids are increasing, natural gas is increasing, renewables, they're really staging a, a major growth period over the next 50 years, which is, which is great news for emissions. But the one that's kind of concerns me the most is the fact that here is, uh, here is coal projected out fairly stable really for this sort of um, 40 year period not really declining on a global scale now it makes sense to prioritize reducing coal then oil then gas so that we take care of the um, fossil fuels and transition away from them in that order now at cop 26 40 countries pledged to quit coal the largest source of co2 emissions in the 2030s that's the projection anyway. But some of the world's largest coal consumers, China, India, USA and Australia, unfortunately, did not sign that pact. And uh, perhaps that's where we should really start looking as we go forward. In summary, the USA has had tremendous success with, with fracking of shales and, and low permeability rocks, and that has transformed their uh, energy business. Gas is now exported from the US to overseas as uh, liquefied natural gas. And it's possible that uh, oil could be exported in the, in the coming years. Oil and gas consumption will decline, but we, we are seeing uh, an overall demand growth through time. And that has to be satisfied. Renewables will make an increasingly significant contribution, but oil and gas is going to be around for decades to come. Conventional oil and gas production, certainly in countries like the US, is, is declining and declining quite quickly. So uh, we need to utilise the existing infrastructure. It makes sense that if we've got pipelines, if we've got terminals and if we've got oil fields, to actually actually keep investing in those, to actually maximise the, the efficiency. It's much cheaper to do that than to actually go and rebuild everything for a new field. Before we start pointing fingers, let's ask ourselves, what am I doing to reduce consumption? Well, what am I doing? Well, here's, here's what we did recently um, on Sunday, the 20th of March. We were out planting trees uh, near a Boyne. Now, here we're seeing we, we only planted 400 trees in, in the day. But it's a start. And uh, the River Dee Trust, which is a charity that we... Um, that we support um, is, is targeting planting one million trees uh, up and down the the D Valley. So uh, there's an example of how you can uh, we can all help. Thank you for listening to this video. 
please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring the bell if you want to be notified when there's new video releases, and there's our contact details if you want to get in touch. Thank you very much for, for listening, and look forward to seeing you back on our channel.